It's been about five years since the Loudmouth Otzel teamed up with a blonde haired hero proper, but now that dark period is behind us because Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier has landed on the PSP with a mix of platforming, flying, and mutated Otzel brawling. The Lost Frontier picks up with Jack, Dexter, and Kara on the outskirts of the world. It seems there's a shortage of eco, the colored commodity that makes the world go round, and the universe is starting to tear itself apart. With everything on the brink of destruction, our band of heroes is out to find a new eco source and set things right. The journey will pit them against sky pirates, monsters, and a whole bunch of moving platforms that only one goateeless dude can traverse. For the most part, The Lost Frontier is a good looking game. The colors are vibrant, Jack looks good in motion as he spins around wailing on people, the dogfights are fierce, and so on. The trouble is that making an awesome platformer on the PSP is hard because there's no second analog stick to allow for easy camera control, and that's exactly what trips up this game. I found myself missing easy jumps because I couldn't see how far away from a ledge I was, falling to my death because my feet were cut off by the screen and I couldn't see the edge of what I was standing on, and so much more. There also isn't any way to lock onto enemies, so I found myself getting surrounded and having to run at the screen shooting and hoping I was hitting the bad guys. These aren't deal breaking issues because the gameplay is fun, but they are sticking points that drag down the overall product. The same can be said for the tack down storyline and the empty environments. Turns out one of the guys you casually meet and forget about in the beginning ends up being this big deal, but by the time he pops back up I'd already forgotten who he was and how he fit into the story. In terms of the environments, they feel extremely, extremely empty. Running around areas, the only sound I heard was often my own footsteps. There are three parts to gameplay in The Lost Frontier, and the majority of them are a lot of fun. To kick things off, this is a bit of a throwback to the platforming of the first Jack title. There are lots of ledges to jump to, poles to twirl around and leap from, and melee combos for you to drop on baddies. Now your guns are here as well, so this isn't an exact replica of the platforming you remember, but it's still a nice throwback. On top of the jumps and spins you know, high impact games tossed in several eco powers for you to master. Jack can slow down time, create pillars out of the ground, hover after jumping, and create a bubble shield around his entire body. These additions are awesome and key to solving the game's puzzles. Dogfighting is another huge part of this game. You'll have access to a handful of planes by the time this title is finished, and you'll be able to pick and choose which ones you want to take into battle. In the air, you'll have guns and missiles to target foes with, the D-pad lets you do barrel rolls and 180 degree turns, and you can trick the plane out however you like. Customization is a huge part of this title. You can upgrade Jack's abilities as well, but it shines when you're assembling your plane. The third main part of gameplay is Dark Daxter. At some point, Dax gets doused in Dark Eco and suddenly mutates into an 8-foot monsterized version of himself with a spiky tail and Hulk-like speech pattern. <laughs> Welcome to the other end of the food chain. You'll need to send him around levels, smashing floor tiles and hurling purple eco fireballs. These levels didn't do it for me, but I didn't hate them. They're short, so they shouldn't be a hang up for anybody, but they just don't fit into the title all that well. It's just running from one side of the screen to the other and hitting enemies. I enjoyed Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier. I'm a fan of the series and thought the platforming was fun, the puzzles using powers were cool and the upgrading of ships and jack provided some depth. Unfortunately, the empty environments, camera issues, and repetitive nature of some of the battles really keep me from giving this a glowing recommendation. There's fun to be had here, but a little polish would have gone a long way. For the full written review, check out IGN.com.